The other big story that we've been talking about, we are continuing to track Hurricane Ian right, uh, Ian right now, that is, uh, with winds uh, it's sustained at 100, moving to the north-northwest at 13 miles per hour. That centers now 155 miles southeast of the western tip of Cuba, making its way off towards the west-northwest as a major hurricane by late tonight into early tomorrow morning near the Florida Straits, then continuing closer towards the west sides of Florida, possibly as a Category 4 hurricane going into Wednesday afternoon, getting very close to the Tampa Bay area by late Wednesday into Thursday and making its way possibly on shore just north of that as a major hurricane may be downgrading just a little bit. And just north of Tampa right now is our CBS 11's Jason Allen headed down to that area. And Jason, the last time we joined you, you were noticing not a lot of people driving out of the area. What are you noticing now? Right, so Scott, we were about 90 miles north of Tampa about an hour or so ago. Now we're about 50 miles or so outside of the area. And we look at out the dash cam here, and I want you to see the difference because when we were up north, it was mostly just, it was trees, right? It was a lot of swamp land. And now you make a difference of about 40 miles, and now this is much more heavily populated. A lot of homes, a lot of commercial areas, a lot of power lines. And so that track and the eventual movement of this storm, that's why it's going to be so important. Just that small difference, 40 miles, is going to make such a difference. In what we see the effects here over the next couple of days. We have not seen a lot more traffic. We haven't really seen too many signs of people getting out. What we have seen, Scott, is we are starting to get into the areas where we notice gas stations are already starting to run out of fuel. It's getting a little spotty. Um, looks like some places are closed. We've seen some school buses moving around. We know that some school districts are already talking about closing. And remember, we're still two to three days out from maybe the worst that this area is going to see. And I think one of the things that's concerning, too, as we keep watching those models, I'm sure you'll talk about, is the chance that this storm just sort Florida sits over this area for anywhere from 36 to 48 to 60 hours, just pummeling it with winds, dumping a lot of rain. Of course, five years ago, we experienced that with Harvey. Not something you want to see over any part of the country at all, Scott. Yeah, absolutely, Jason. Thanks for bringing that up. And we, Aaron and I were just looking at some of the latest models, Jason, and we noticed that slow movement, maybe that stall. So thanks so much, Jason, Allen, joining us here north of Tampa for us there in one of our mobile 11 units. You can see uh, with the uh, track there, it's going to continue to make its way to the north. But we also wanted to show you the local impact here in North Texas as we take a look at some video there to show you real fast. This, as you can see, this is with Ian heading towards Florida. Uh, the military moving out resources out of the harm's way. Chopper 11 was over uh, the uh, uh, NAS JRB Fort Worth this afternoon. The base received 14 F-16s from Homestead Air Force Base Reserve Reserve Base there today. Uh, South Florida, again, it's uh, very close to that center of circulation. Fort Worth Base told us they're expecting more planes to arrive in North Texas this week, Doug. So already moving the planes out of an area that could get hit, even though that center of circulation is going to be offshore. The storm is very large and it's going to continue that northern track. And what's sad, what's scary to see, I should say, is that uh, it looks like it might slow down just a little bit, Doug. Okay, Scott Padgett, thank you. Normal and routine for the military to move major assets like that out of the way.